So this is the third year that we have done an I2 Coalition fly-in where we've brought dozens of the cloud's most important and thought leaders to Capitol Hill, and we've done it so that they could come here and fight for internet freedom. It's very important stuff, but it, it takes them away from their business. And so we've got these cloud leaders that have come in here uh, to try and help us fight the good fight on issues that are important to the entire industry. And what we've liked to do over the, each year is uh, bring in somebody who can help inspire us in our ongoing efforts. So we've had a featured speaker each year in our events. And this year, I got extremely lucky to have had one of my own personal internet heroes say yes to coming and saying a few words to us. Uh, Mitchell Baker, the, uh, the CEO of Mozilla. Uh, my background is as uh, I, run, I ran a small internet company wherein we were developing web hosting solutions on open source software. And the things that Mitchell has done uh, as the head of Mozilla for the open source software movement in legitimizing it and bringing it into the public sphere, and the things that she have, has done in order to advance the efforts of privacy and security in that same area have inspired me. And so I would like to call her up to say a few words to the community in hopes that uh, she can uh, maybe inspire our community a little bit. Thank you for being with us today. Well, the internet is a remarkable technology. You know, probably the most important collaborative tool and communications tool we'll see in, in our lifetimes. And clearly, I love it. I've spent my life building it, trying to build opportunity and openness and innovation on top of the internet platform. It's such a powerful platform that it shapes thinking in ways that are quite surprising. And in particular, it threatens to upset the balance between the citizen and our governments. You know, the United States, you know, democratic nation, one of the world's great democratic nations, trendsetter in defining the relationship between a citizen and a government, and in creating a government which is aimed at serving its citizens, both in civil liberties and also in economic opportunity, in providing a business opportunity where innovation can flourish and entrepreneurship has a chance and it's possible to bring new ideas to life. We have our relatively short history, our 200, 300 years of history in balancing individual rights, the rights of the government, privacy, national security. We have a history, it's got ups and downs, it's a history we can be proud of. Today, the power of the internet causes us to forget that history. And too often, legislation or threats or risks cause us to look and be afraid and move entirely to the fear end of the spectrum, to the surveillance end of the spectrum, to the law enforcement end, to government suddenly beneficent and government able to possess all power, and we the citizens assume that our government will always be beneficent. Not just us, but the other great democracies are having this discussion as well. And so these organizations, these institutions, and our honored guests tonight are critical in continuing the discussion of what it means to be a democracy, what it means to value the rights of individual citizens, and what it means to empower economic opportunity of individuals. So these kinds of conversations are just the beginning. We can tell more are coming. How to have effective law enforcement at the same time as civil liberties and privacy. Clearly, that's a social discussion we'll be having for the coming decades in the current global political environment. Having leaders who have the foresight and the courage and the effectiveness to represent the openness of society, the balance in a democratic society, the power of the internet for collaboration, the power of a trusted network to bring business opportunities is critical. I'm honored to be here with the representatives, uh, but also honored to be here with you, who are the current and future generations uh, for leading this discussion, and for keeping in mind the power of the internet to generate 
activities, business activities, and to be a trustworthy organization to help us have a relationship with our government that continues to be one where individuals and civil liberties and citizenship have a real meaning. And so I look forward to doing more. Mozilla is pretty active in these areas. I was somewhat inspired by the conversations about 1997, the discussions about export control, because I was involved in those as well, back from Silicon Valley uh, with Netscape. Many of you may remember Netscape Navigator. When we started, the encryption limits were 56-bit, not enough to make a trustworthy commercial system. And so we had long discussions. Netscape was extremely active, um, probably the most active company in that era in explaining and demonstrating that a trustworthy internet is good for business and that a trustworthy internet required 128-bit encryption and that if we could provide a trustworthy internet, commerce, economic activity, banking activity, health activity, the range of civil and social and public benefit would grow immensely. And interestingly, in that discussion, there was also a terrorist incident in the middle of that discussion, which threatened to derail the change to 128-bit encryption. But at that time as well, we had good leaders, we had the right coalition, and we were successful. And so this discussion will continue. It's probably discussion of a generation to figure out how our democratic values and traditions and how our drive to enable individuals to be able to build economic value and businesses and companies, how that plays out with the power of a technology like the internet. And so I inspired myself and encouraged, and there's certainly plenty of work to do, and to continue the discussion, how much freedom can we have as citizens in a safe and healthy society, and how much of the open internet can we carry forward for the future? Thank you.